Yo, what's up? I'm back and I want to explain a little something, this little lecture I call lily pads, hospitals, mortality, and masks. Okay, I'm going to talk about how these all these things relate. Um, and one of the things we're going to talk about, the dangers of using real-time mortality estimates. All right, and I want you to believe that you better be careful when you do it. And I'm going to give you an example. So first, we're going to start with a cool problem that explains the complexity and the misunderstandings of exponential growth, because everyone's talking about it. But this problem really elucidates the concept. And here's the problem. There's a pond. And in that pond, there's a lily pad grows. Boom. And once one lily pad shows up, guess what? The number of lily pads in this problem doubles every day. So on day one, there was one, and then there were two, and then there were four, and it doubled and doubled and doubled. And it took 30 days for that pond to fill up. So my question is, if it took 30 days to fill up, when was it half filled? And most people will say, day 15, it was probably half filled. No, it was half filled on day 29 because it's doubling every day. So it doubled, double, double, double until one day. Guess what? It was half filled on the next day. This doubled and filled it up. So on day 29, it was half filled. Then day 30. Now, if for somehow these lily pads could grow outside of the lake, we'll pretend, how many li lily pads are there on day 31? Well, there's another, this doubles till we have another whole pond fill on day 31. And another, and guess what? On day 32, all of these double. So we have one, two, and this is day 32. Okay? It's amazing. It's mind blowing exponential growth. It's hard to conceive it because people don't understand it, is why. We see what's happening. People don't understand the real problem that we're facing. Now, this is how the hospitals are going to fill up. And what does it mean? A lily pad that grows outside of the pond is not going to get the treatment it needs, the nutrients. So you have to understand that every disease has really two mortality rates. One, for people who get treatment, meaning they get a hospital bed, oxygen, medications, antiviral stuff. And then there's a mortality rate for those who don't get treatment. And that's true for any disease. So don't think that COVID is not like that. It's going to have a much higher mortality rate for all the folks who can't get into beds. And we haven't seen that. A little bit in Wuhan, we're seeing it in Italy, but we're thinking it's not going to happen here. Well, thank God we put in some measurements, but you're going to see it probably happen here too. Right? Now, so that's one thing. Don't use the estimates in South Korea or don't use the estimates in Germany. All right? Those people have not hit this. They have got, they've been able to treat everybody so far. Okay. Now, I'll talk about Germany in a bit. So we know that they have two mortality rates. Next, so hopefully you understand that exponentially kind of cool. Now, next, if you're still with me, I want to explain the danger in real time calculation of mortality rates. I've done this lecture a couple different times. I had all kinds of cool logarithmic charts and I was going to show you how we can make it linear and all that. So I said, this doesn't make sense to people who don't do math all the time. So I, what I did was I'm using an example problem to elucidate this concept. This is not real. It's called example virus. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to simulate example virus, and I'm going to show you how calculating mortality rates as things are growing could be misleading. So here's my example virus. Here's example virus has a mortality rate of 10%. It doubles the number of people who have it, doubles every day, the total number of people. And the time till someone dies, it's not fun to think about, is exactly five days. Everybody who will die, dies exactly on the fifth day. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. All right, so we have days right here. Day one, day two, day three, four, five, six, seven. We'll go through this week, okay, and we'll see what happens. All right, now... What are the total number of cases? We're going to pretend on day one that 10 people plop down, okay? 10 people plop down and had the disease, right? Okay, well, we know we're going to simulate what would happen based on these. This is the truth. That's what I'm creating. This is the real time people will have it. That 10 becomes 20. That 20 becomes 40. That 40 becomes 80, becomes 160, becomes 320, 640, and we'll go day 8, 12, 80. Okay, 64 and 64 is 120, yes, 1280. So that's the total number of people, right, in this simulation. Cool. Now, there are new people that are added on. This is a total, okay? Um, so the new people, there were 10 added on here, 10 more to get the 20, 
20 more to get to 40, 40 new people on day four to get to 80, 80 new people on day five to get to 160, 160 new to get here, 320 new to get here, and 640 new to get there. Now, at the end of this time, on day eight, right, on day eight, we know that there'll be 1,280 people, right, that are going to have it. And because 10% of them will die, we know that 128 out of the 1280 are going to die based on this made up thing. Okay? But watch what happens when we start trying to calculate this as it's growing. Okay, Really important. So these are the new cases on each individual day. So on day one of these 10 people, one of them is going to die eventually. One of these people will. Two of these people will, four of these people will, eight of these people will, 16 of these people will, 32 of these people, and 64 of those people will, okay? But here's the real deal. When will these people die, okay? It is horrible to think about, but this guy takes five days before he passes away. One, two, three, four, five. This person dies right here. This person dies right here. These two people die one, two, three, four, five days later. Okay? So I want to keep the total deaths per day. This, we don't have anything happening here. No deaths, no deaths, no deaths, no deaths. One total death plus this one are two total deaths plus this one are four. Now, suppose day eight, we have a test that could test every single person who actually had the virus. When we took that test and guess what? How many people have it? 1280. And it comes out and we say 1280 confirmed cases. How many deaths do we have on that day? Four. There are four out of 1280, which gives us a very, very, like half of a, a tiny little mortality rate. But what is the mortality rate? It's 10%. And I think that's why we're getting such a low mortality rate in Germany right now. They're doubling every three days. They're testing like crazy. So they have a pretty good estimate on the number of people, right? But they're using today's mortality rate, the number of people who die. Well, this disease, this horrible thing, is taking between two and six weeks. So even right now, if we stopped and there was not one more transmission today, not one more transmission in the world, guess what? For the next month and a half, people are still going to keep dying. And that's a fact, okay? As a matter of fact, the death rate is actually the only, the number of dead per day is actually the only real good statistic we can grab right now because of how shoddy our testing is. So what's nice is, what's not nice, but what you notice if you were following the numbers in Italy, Italy was growing exponentially all the way through last Saturday until Sunday when it dropped from 800 something down to 650. And I cheered, and then it went down to 600, and I cheered, and then it went up to 700, and I was like, oh no, and then it went down to 600, which means they went, whoo, flattening. And if you go back to see what happened in Italy, guess what? About three or four weeks ago is when they started putting in social distancing measures, which means it's going to take three or four weeks for us to see the impact. So as things grow over the next few weeks, understand that. But hopefully that this example showed you when you're using today's deaths, you're way over underestimating the fatality rate, okay? Now, by this much, no. This was just an example to show you, okay? But I think uh, by a few, in, in Germany right now, by uh, I'm thinking four, maybe three or four times, and I want to talk about Korea, South Korea, next, okay? So we talked about lily pads. Oh, the other thing is, the other thing is, this, this rate, too, is assuming that everybody has a hospital bed. We talked a second ago about what happens. We haven't seen what people don't have any more hospital beds. What happens to that mort mortality rate? Shoom! Okay? Think about anything. Anything disease you get. If you can't see a doctor, you just got to stay in your room. That's what it's going to be like. That's what happened in Italy. If you're over 60, sorry, you have to go over there. That's why doctors, it's... it's Killing them. It's demor they're being demoralized. They don't have the tools necessary to treat and save people's lives. Okay? And this is real. Finally, I want to talk about I had lily pads, hospitals, the dangers of mortality, uh, assumptions on the run, and masks. Masks. Okay? When I talk about masks, I'm not talking about N95 masks. Those go to the experts. Those go to the first responders. Okay? I'm talking about 
just like this right here, okay? Make your own mask. My wife made this cool one. Look, it's got little bass on it, like little, little fish. And watch this. I can put it on like this, and it looks kind of cool. Why would I say put on a mask, okay? If the CD well, Listen, why would a mask be helpful if you're treating somebody who's ill that you know and not be helpful when you're standing near somebody who's ill that you don't know, okay? Here's what these things do. They're not N95. They're not going to filter out, but what they do do is this. Do do. <coughs> if I cough, I cannot feel that. All that moisture from my cough, hush-hoo! and my sneeze gets caught in here. So if I'm a carrier and I don't know it, and I cough in the grocery aisle, instead of those droplets all going onto the Cheerios, where later on some elderly person will grab those Cheerios, go home, all right, and then get sick, all of most, most of that moisture gets stuck in my mask, okay? Now, I'll be wearing a mask every time I go to a store because I think they're cool. In South Korea, guess what? They're all wearing masks. Why? Because they look at it as their social responsibility to protect others from us. And they, we need to make this as commonplace as they have it there. Now, this is coming from me. I am not an epidemiologist. I am just a guy that looks at numbers in my office, okay? But what I'm seeing is, what's the big difference? Why, right from the beginning, did your, all European countries and American countries shoot up doubling at once every, every three days, the doubling number? And then... Korea, South Korea, didn't even close anything down. What did they do? Masks on, social distancing, keep your distance, let's go to work. So, it's very obvious, okay? Secondly, I'm just going to show you some very simple math. Suppose this thing only blocked 30% of what's coming out of my face, okay? Well, that means here I am with my mask, and here's somebody else with their mask, and if I exhale, and it only blocks 30%, that means out of here, 30% blocked, leaving only 70%, right? Oh my gosh. So my 70% goes over to this guy and he breathes in. <sighs> and it's only blocking 30%. If it's blocking 30%, it's letting in 70%. So 70% of my 70% goes in there. And 70% times 70% is 49, only 49% goes into him. So notice, so just wearing these ridiculously homemade masks that might only be blocking 30% of the stuff still may, may, may save somebody. Who? I don't know. But you can make one yourself. There's plenty of patterns online. I think Joanne Fabrics giving out free ones for kits. Make sure when you do go in, you cover up. And you can even get stylish. Like here's a red one. If you're like a big Trump fan, you can make a Make America Great Again mask, okay? Well, you just tie this thing up. <coughs> I can't feel it. If you ever watched a sneeze or a cough in slow motion and those water droplets, just to stop the water droplets. And you might be saying, well, I'm not coughing. Have you ever coughed before when you weren't sick? That may happen. And it may be when you're near someone elderly or you're near something that someone who's older or someone who has immune, immunocompromised may touch, okay? So, please wear a mask. Um, finally, if you're still with me, if you're like, what is he talking about? The other reason why I think, I, I, I actually think that, um, well, I'll talk about it, I'll talk about it right now because I'm here and if you're paying attention is, um, two other things grow exponentially, okay? Which is kind of interesting. Um, we know that in most diseases, and I'm not an epidemiologist, but I'm showing what I, what I remember I learned in my biology class um, years ago and what I read about, um, is that when you, the amount of exposure you have to a certain thing, um, the severity of the disease um, increases. So more stuff means more disease. And this is because viruses also grow exponentially in your body. So if you start with this much virus, guess what? Over here, you're going to have this much virus. But if you start with this much virus, over here you're going to have this much virus, and over here you're going to have this much virus, okay? So that compares to this much virus. So a lot of, if you get a lot of exposure, someone sneezes in your face, versus a little bit of exposure, someone sneezes in your face with a mask, okay? Guess what else grows exponentially? Your immune response. So it's going to sense it and try to catch up, but it can only grow so fast. If you start here, your immune system is going, hey, get back here, buddy. And it doesn't have time 
to build the antibodies it needs. Now, don't take that as facts or whatever. That's just what I remember I learned in a class somewhere along the day in my life. And I remembered it and it makes total sense to me. It's logical. But either way, if even if that's not true, catch your damn sneezes, okay? Be a good neighbor, all right? Come on, make them cool. Put your favorite pattern on it. Cut up an old t-shirt or something, represent. But be a good neighbor. There are fragile people out there that need your help. And someday you might be one of them, all right? So thanks for watching. Hopefully you understand the lily pad problem and its impact and how you can use that to understand hospital capacity. Um, mortality rates running are kind of not that great. And wearing a mask isn't gonna hurt you, okay? Buying a bunch of N95, that's, that's bad. Those are for the, make one. Handkerchief, whatever, bandana, yeehaw, whatever you do. Just cover your face, okay? Because I don't want you sneezing, carrying this thing, sneezing, not knowing, and hurting somebody, all right? So stay safe, stay home, social distance, cover your face. Peace.